year three of our solar installation and back in December we were only able to generate enough electricity to charge my electric truck up one time. We are now three years into this and I was estimating that at year six we would have everything paid off. Halfway there and I guess it's time we do some math. What is that sound? Oh. It looks like it's the number one rated portable speaker from DxO Mark called the Soundcore X600, my channel sponsor. I wish you guys could hear this thing in person. It's the perfect example of big things coming in small packages. Come here. Soundcore is using a custom self-developed spatial audio algorithm and an upward firing driver to make sounds and music appear as if it's coming from anywhere or everywhere in a room. Spatial audio is like taking 360 degree or surround sound to the next level. There are three amplifiers, two tweeters, two woofers, and of course the full driver up top. And the whole thing is X7 water resistant, thankfully. If you're in the market for a certified high res speaker under 200 bucks with a seamless metal design, I'll leave a link for the Soundcore X600 down in the video description. Now where were we? Oh yes, talking about how my solar panels are not performing well this year. Let's get started. So let's time travel back three years ago when I installed this 8 kilowatt system on my house. We have 26 solar panels generating DC electricity here on the roof. These are all plugged into AC microinverters that make the electricity usable for my appliances. All of the sunlight juice is piped down into the electrical panel where my appliances and electronics get first dibs, and any excess electricity is set off to the grid for my neighbors to use. It sounds weird at first letting my electricity that I generated flow out to the grid, but my service provider keeps track of it and lets me have it back at night, you know, when the sun's not out. Plus, this 8 kilowatt system isn't enough for all of my use, so it's rare when the electricity does flow out anyway. In the last three years, I've had zero maintenance, and I've maybe washed the panels two or three times after big dust storms. Normally, I just let the rain take care of things by itself. Now that the recap is out of the way, let's do some math. About three years ago, I paid $8,234 for this setup. That it's after the state and federal tax incentives. Side note, lucky for you guys, the tax incentives now from the federal government are higher than when I bought mine three years ago. And I think that's awesome. Look at them doing something right. It looks like the first year we had the panels, we generated 13,140 kilowatt hours of energy and saved about $1,314. It looks like the second year we generated about 12,639 kilowatt hours of energy and saved about 1,338. And year three, this is where things started to tank. Last December, we only made 180 kilowatt hours of energy from the sun, which is only enough electricity to power my truck one time. Pretty terrible month for energy generation, but I don't think that it's a problem with the solar panels. This year in Utah, winter was absolutely crazy with the most snowfall we've had in about a hundred years. And as you can see from the graph of my solar generation, it doesn't generate a whole lot when they're covered especially when the snow is on top of the panels for, you know, most of the month. Even though we had a record-breaking, brutal, snow-covered winter, we also had a record-breaking heat wave of a summer, with the month of May giving me about 10 Rivians worth of electricity instead of just one. The weather sure is going crazy. I wish there was some kind of like scientist or something who could tell us what's going on. All in all, factoring in both the record-breaking winter and the record-breaking summer, we ended up generating about 11,415 kilowatt hours of energy, which is about $1,216 of savings on my electrical bill, bringing our total savings over the course of three years to $3,869 keeping us on pace to paying itself off in six and a half years. Even though we had a rough winter, it's nice to see that we're still trending to pay it off, even though the overall downward trend of production is rather concerning. The price of electricity is going up just a tiny bit though, so there's lots of different variables and factors at play. And of course, with the lifespan of the panels being around 30 years before they hit 80%, I'll end up saving probably around $35,000 by the time I'm 70. Just little rectangular employees back there on my roof making me money when the sun comes out. 
it's a good investment. Kind of goes to show that solar panels aren't all sunshine and roses, but you know, weather's weather and weather happens. I'm a huge fan of solar panels, not just because they offset carbon emissions, but because they also keep Utah air cleaner, and of course, they put money back into my pocket. So it's still a win on multiple levels, even with the crazy winter. If you want to install your own solar and maybe have a DIY kit like the one I use, I'll leave a link down in the video description. Plus $250 off, it comes with a detailed plan set, kind of a booklet of instructions specifically for your house. However, if you don't want to install solar panels yourself, I broke my wrist once falling off a ladder, I totally understand why someone would not want to. I'll leave a link for Tesla Solar down there as well. When I was researching, Tesla Solar was pretty fairly priced, although it's been a while. So feel free to shop around. With all of the government incentives and how much money it actually saves you, there's a lot of people installing solar lately. Hit that subscribe button, cause rain or shine, I'll be back here again next year. And thanks a ton for watching. I'll see you around.